And today I would be um, touching on two major points from last week. Um, Pastor asked me to do that today. Um, about the five things that allows the believer to experience the king of glory. Amen. Five things. Last Sunday we touched on them, but I'm going to be emphasizing much more on two today. And, um, you know, uh, when pastor comes back, he would continue on the remainder. So from last week, if you remember, pastor made mention of five things that um, brings in the king of glory. The prayer, the word of God, evangelism, given and what holiness i repeat that prayer the word of god given evangelism and holiness and today we'll be talk, talking much more on prayer and the word of god but before i enter into those so i just want to touch briefly on the given amen just quickly on the given um one morning i came here for prayers the morning prayers we heard and you know personally i don't me and money i'm not like somebody i'm not like um i'm not too like i'm not attached to money that's my kind of person you know um but as i was praying and i don't know whether i don't know what led me to the book of philippians and i got to the last chapter and i began to read it now I've read, I always say, I know you've heard me say that. I, you know, you have read the Bible verse before, a Bible chapter before, and you're like, oh yeah, I know what that Bible says, you know. I know God said this and this in this chapter. But I read that chapter, those verses in, those, in that chapter again, and I said, Kai, I've never seen this in this light before. And at that point, I knew that the Spirit of the Lord was prompting me to do something. I'm telling you something, because... Many a time you say, why do I have to give? What is the importance of giving? Like, it's, 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 an, it's, it's not necessary. Let, let's go quickly to there before we go to Philippians chapter 4. I want you to please pay attention. Now, I know we are giving people, but I want to say this because, you know, giving can bring answers. Are you with me? Bringing can bring answers. Giving can bring answers. It can do what I dare say your prayer and your fasting may not be able to do. Are you with me? Because some things only giving unlocks them. Are you with me? God did not say pray and I will and I will make and I will kind of bless you. He didn't say that. He said give and it will be given unto you. It's the principle, it's the law of the kingdom. Are you with me? So many a times we are praying for what we need to take actions about. You don't pray when it comes to you give. Give is an action where you what? You give. Are you with me? Now let's see this quickly. That's not where we are going to, but I want to just, you know, it might be an answer to somebody's question here today. You might need to do something. Philippians chapter 4. Okay. Let's start from verse 10. So Paul says to the church in Philippi, he said, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me has flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not speak in respect of one. So Paul is not saying, I'm not saying this because I am begging you to give me. He said, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, dare we to be content. I know both how to be at base and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Notwithstanding, you have well done that you did communicate with my affliction. Now, you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. 
For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire a gift. Now he's repeating it again. But I desire fruit that may abound to your, to your what? To your what? Account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which, you, which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Now hear this. I know we quote this very often. It's a very, some people, it's one of those popular verses that you know. It says, but my God will supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That is where I'm coming to. But my God will supply what? Your need. Now there are some things in our lives that money cannot handle. Are you with me? There are some needs. Are you with me? There are some needs that you currently have that money cannot handle. And in the prayer of Paul for this, we say that, but my God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You see, when you give, you are giving God allowance to attend to needs that money cannot handle. Are you with me? If somebody, if you're with me, say amen. When you give, you're not just giving because they say, well, let us give. Or, you know, if I don't give, you know, they will, they will say I did not give in church. No. There are some things that your money will never be able to handle. There are some things you don't even know that you need, but you need. Are you with me? There are some things that you need, but you don't even, you know there is something that is lacking, but you don't even know how to phrase that need. But that need is evidently there. Whether you see it whether you don't see it. But when you give to the Lord, what happens is that God will supply your need. Not according to your bank account, not according to your connection, but according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. You're not too young to give. Your giving can pave your future for you. That you get into your future because of what you've been given. That need has been supplied beforehand. Are you with me? You don't give to impress anybody. You see, the way God has made things to be is whenever a person keeps investing in him, pouring in him, there is no way there will not be an overflow balance. There is no way. There is no way. There is no way. So please, I want to beg us. I, I wanted to just touch briefly on this. Do you want to see needs in your life covered? You say, I didn't know this. I didn't. I, actually, did I even pray about this? I, I don't think I asked God about this. But there is something about giving. Whether it's your time. We'll get to that prayer. Whether it's spending in the word, reading the word of God giving on to the Lord, but also of your substance. Are you with me? Give. 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 Don't, kind of, don't be always being like, you know, I, I, you know, don't be stingy with God. And I want to give you a secret today. You can take it, you can reject it, you can say it's, it's, it's just a human being speaking. I was telling my children, I was, we were reading the book of Thessalo Thessalonians and Paul said something there. He said, we thank God that when we came to you and we preached the word of God, you did not take it as though it was words of men, but you took it as it is in the truth, the very word of God, and it works in you effectually because you received it as the word of God. And I want you to please receive what I'm saying. I want you to make up your mind we're still in the very early stage of 2023. January is still here. Make up your mind that apart from, you know, I give my tithes, I give my offering. Paul, he was writing to this church. He was like a spiritual leader over them. Are you with me? If you're with me, say amen. amen. And 
he didn't beg them to say, come and give me something or come and give. No, no, he, did. He, he said, I, I know how to, whether you give me, I'm okay. God is my provider. He said that actually when you give me, it's for God to supply your own needs. Are you with me? Your own needs. Your own needs. So make up your mind. I know people, they have many ways of calling it. I'm, I think what I will call it the prophet's offering. I don't know how best or the prophet's seed. You know I don't talk about money. If you, this is the first time you see me saying, but I have to say because if something hits me, I have to say it. I have to say it. Make up your mind this year. If it's every month, okay, who is my spiritual leader? Or who is somebody that, you know, God is using to feed? Because Paul was actually feeding this church. He was like a shepherd over them. He was saying, okay, I'm the one that God... The Bible says, if we minister to you spiritual things, why can't you minister back to us of your own substance? That's what Paul wrote. He wasn't begging. And he wasn't even looking for their... He wasn't looking for anything from them. Amen. So make up your mind. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to give. When you're giving it, I say, Lord, I thank you because you are supplying all my needs. The ones I know, the ones I don't know. The ones that will come to me in the next five years, you are supplying it. That is how people secure their future. People don't get into the future and say, oh, people are buying me things or people are actually favor. It doesn't just happen. It's a prince. They give. It will be given to you. So make up your mind. I'm going to give this. Year. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going to just, you know, um, think only, yes, pray, yes, fast. But also what? Give. And Paul said, my God will supply all your need according to his own riches. Amen. So let's hold on to that secret. You will see that things, answers will come swiftly. In addition to your prayers and fasting, things will happen. Amen. Things will happen.